best-selling novelist Owen Waterbury hires an aspiring writer, Stephanie Gaylord, to be his secretary. She thinks this is a good deal until she realizes Waterbury is more interested in blondes than in books. This is My Dear Secretary, a smart comedy that features a first-rate cast. Kirk Douglas plays Waterbury, Lorraine Day plays Stephanie, and in supporting roles, you'll see Keenan Wynn, Rudy Valley and Irene Ryan, all at the top of their game. Also look for former model and B-movie starlet Virginia Hewitt as one of the wackiest blondes to ever dream of movie stardom. She just about steals the show, by the way. Now from 1948, written and directed by Charles Martin, here's My Dear Secretary. He gets most of his ideas from me. Excuse me. Yes? Uh, you're sitting in my seat. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Good evening, Miss Gaylord. Hello, Mrs. Scott. Uh, anybody sitting here? Yes, Clarence Henderson. But he's out sick tonight. Well, then why did you make me move? Oh, Clarence and I don't speak. Oh, well... Attention, class. As I promised you, our guest speaker tonight will be none other than Owen Waterbury, author of the new bestseller, Last Year's Love. <laughs> Mr. Waterbury. Oh, louder, louder. That's enough. I understand that most of you hold all sorts of jobs during the day, and yet you've been studying the technique of writing in the evening. Now you're ready to take your pen in hand and go out and conquer the world. <laughs> you know, I'm hardly the person to tell you how to write because I don't follow any rules. Today, the writer is asked to keep one eye on the bestseller list, the other on art. That's divided loyalty, and that makes for dishonesty. I'm 
must confess, I've been guilty of this dishonesty, too. But now that I've made my position secure, I'm going to try to write a really good book. No more bestsellers, but something that I hope will be a piece of great writing. You know, good writing, fine writing, is here and here. The dictionary is filled with all the words you need, but unless the mind and the heart find those words for you, you better leave them in the dictionary. He's so brilliant. Because a writer, fundamentally, must believe in himself. That's half the battle. I'd uh, like to interrupt my little talk for a moment to say that I'm going to be in a position to help somebody here in this class. Beginning tomorrow, I'm going to need a secretary. I've already placed the request with the University Placement Bureau, and uh, man or woman, whoever qualifies, will get the job. That's very nice of you, Mr. Waterbury. Well, it's not a big job, but the surroundings will be wholesome. And you'll be able to serve your apprenticeship under someone who's already established. Well, so much for that. I remember when I wrote my first novel. It took a lot of work. I starved, lived in a little back room, all the while consoling myself that I was going to be another poet. So you're really going to work for Owen Waterbury? Well, I, I was offered the job by his personnel manager. I've heard a lot of weird stories about Owen Waterbury. Oh, you hear weird stories about any famous person. Why, well, last night his talk was actually inspiring. Steve, do you realize you've been here five years? Well, isn't that a, a little too long for anyone with my ambition? Where does Mr. Waterbury do his work? Well, his personnel manager said in his apartment. Apartment? Well, you can't expect a writer to work in an office, Mr. Harris. I want to write, and I think he can show me how. Who knows? After a year with him, I, I might even be autographing copies of my own book in, in one of your bookstores. By taking a course in Owen Waterbury. And getting paid for it at the same time. I'm going to miss you, Steve. Oh, no, you won't. After a week, you won't even know I've gone. Not true, but good luck anyway. Well, I could make a big speech, but I think you know how I feel about everything. You've been wonderful to me. I understand. Steve. Yes? Call me sometime, will you? We'd like to know how you're getting on. I'll call you tonight, after I get the job. To watch while you're parking. Well, you can back up, can't you? You've got a revise. Never mind, Bill. Just save your energy for upstairs. Smart guy. Hand me the bag, Bill. Yes, sir. I'll take it upstairs for you, man. <laughs> Anything drives a cab these days. Apartment 3E. Thank you, Mother. Remember, Bill, if he says one word that's out of line, just one word, I want you to buff him right on the job. They might take my license away. Not for protecting a lady. Well, come on in around in a row. You know, I hit pretty hard. The harder, the better. Is he a big guy? Six feet of bluff. I'll cut him down. I didn't get this nose for nothing. Uh, are you sure he can't fight? He's a writer. Writer? Writer? Now, remember, if he just so much as opens his mouth... Uh, don't worry, I'll shut it up. I got a bigger mouth than he's got. I've come for my things. And what's the objection? Evidently, he has none. Follow me, Bill. Now then, I want you to take all the things out of that drawer and put them into that bag. Y yes, ma'am. No, 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 not the drawer, just the things. Oh, oh come in, come in, come right in. That's right. Uh, that's Mr. Waterbury's former secretary. She quit this morning. Uh, won't you sit down? This is my mink. And how? Waterbury gave that to her as a Christmas bonus. My typewriter. Well, uh, that was sort of a, 
New Year's bonus. My aujourd'hui. Uh, she brought her own uh, aujourd'hui. My pot. She uh, she cooked once in a while. My bourbon. She uh, drank a little. My cigarette box. She smoked too. My lipstick. Uh, shall we adjourn to the library? Your frankfurters. Goodbye, Mr. Waterbury. Good thing you didn't open your mouth. Yes, thank you. Come along, Bill. Don't bother with your inferiors. And now, miss, what can I do for you? This, uh, this is your new secretary. Oh, yes, you're from the Kilbride School. Yes, I am. Say, look at that. She knocked over a bottle of ink all over the carpet, and it's going to be hard to get out, too. Oh, would you try cleaning it up, please, Mary? Not me. The landlady says I'm not to clean up any more messes. Just do my regular work and get out of here. Excuse me. Would you like some help? Oh, thank you very much. Say, you're going to work out fine. Here, Ronnie. I'm an expert at this sort of thing. He sure is. He cleans up about six of them a month. I'll need a cloth and some rug shampoo. This is the stuff you've been using lately. Here, this is a woman's job. It was a woman who did it. It was an accident. You better not let the landlady see that. She'll add $100 for damages to your rent. That's more than last month. Oh, I got some on my dress. Oh, I'm, oh, look, why don't you work on the rug and I'll work on your dress? Why don't you two work on the rug and I'll work on her dress? I'll work on my dress. I'll work on the kitchen. Do you like hot dogs? Occasionally, yes. Fine, we'll have them for lunch. And for dinner, we'll have steak. Lunch? Dinner, what? I haven't even been interviewed yet. What's your name? Stephanie Gaylord. What do your friends call you? Steve. Oh, that settles it. I think she should be hired. How are you on shorthand? 120 words a minute. Do you do laundry? Well, my own, generally. Well, you're going to have to learn to do silk shirts, 120 a minute. I'll do the cooking and eating. <laughs> do you live here, too? No, I live next door. But he hasn't been there since July. That's because I have no kitchen. Well, we see, we share our kitchen on a cooperative basis. He cooks and he eats. <laughs> you know, Owen and I went to school together. I was in kindergarten, and he was in the eighth grade. Then I went to high school, and he was still in kindergarten. And then I studied piano and became a character in every Waterbury book. And what were you in last year's love? I was the chorus girl who studied piano and was very bitter about the world. <laughs> Where'd you work before? Who, me? I was secretary to Charles Harris. He... He owns the Harris bookstores all over the country. And how is Mr. Waterbury's latest novel doing? Second only to the Bible. Oh, well, he won't like that. You married, Steve? No, I'm not. Please, Ronnie, I'm not interested in whether or not Miss Gaylord is married. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My biscuits are burning. I've, uh, I've had married secretaries before, and, well, their husbands were a little troublesome. <laughs> they were murder. <laughs> Uh, his working hours are very peculiar. I think we've done a good job. I had such a different impression of what this job would be like. Oh, today was an unusual day. But after this, there'll be no more distractions. I'll go. We're going to work in an atmosphere of dignity and culture. Oh, it's your bookmaker. Mary, that man's here again. I heard you. How much do I owe this time? Eleven bucks. Don't you give me no more of your tips. That horse will come in next time out. Next time out, he'll be dragging a load of ice. Well, uh, what do we owe you? Two hundred and seventy-eight for Owen, and a buck for you. There you are. Uh, I'll have to owe you mine until next week. You want to wager today? Well, uh, I haven't looked them over yet, but I'll give you a call. And no more 50 cent bets. The boss don't like them. Um, where was I? You were telling me that everything here was dignified and cultural. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, Steve, about your other duties.
Did you just have an interview with my daughter, Mary Hastings, about a secretarial job? Why, yes. I have a message for you. Well, what's the message? Mr. Waterbury, I don't think I want this job. Well, why not? Well, when you spoke at class last evening, my everything seemed so... So refreshing. And when I read your novels, they they were filled with such quality and high purpose. And I'm afraid all that's spoiled now. So no harsh words, no hard feelings. Just just get somebody else. Well, if that's the way you feel, Miss Gaylord. Are you walking out on Owen Waterbury? Don't beg the girl to work for me, Ronnie. Just call the agency and get another girl. Now, you know you don't mean that. We both like this one. Are you going to let me out of here, or do I have to call the police? They're here already. I came for the rent. <laughs> Mrs. Reeves, I just mailed you a check this morning. Oh, you always do that knowing full well that I only live downstairs. Any uh, damage this month? Oh, it's been a very, very uneventful month. Oh, the carpet again. <laughs> Mercy! This fish belongs here. And this duck up here, you throw the whole room out of contour. Mrs. Reeves, if you'll excuse I me... I heard you screaming just outside the door. New secretary? Well, yes, yes. You being hired or fired? Uh, Miss Gaylord has just been engaged. Oh, too bad, Mr. Waterbury, because something moved in the apartment upstairs. Stairs, but just fill your every requirement. Well, unfortunately, Mrs. Reeves, uh, the job has just been filled. Well, I want you to meet her anyway. Felicia! Uh, coming, Mrs. Reeves. Felicia Adams, I want you to meet the famous Owen Waterbury. How do you do? How do you do? How do you um, do? Felicia came to California to get into the movies. Now, who does she remind you of? Oh, well, now, don't tell me. Let me guess. Zezu Pitt. Oh, of course not. Uh, Felicia, in addition to being a secretary, is a very good actress, aren't you, dear? Now, take off your coat and let them see. She's got a lot of talent there. Oh, I thought you'd think so. I was a model back in Texas, but I came out here for a career. Daddy's financing me. A friend of yours? Oh, uh, no, my father. Uh, <laughs> perhaps Felicia could play the heroine in your next novel when it's made into a movie. Uh, she could do that. What's a heroine like? It's a girl from the South. Why, I'm from the South. How perfectly coincidental. Uh, she's trying to hook a rich man. She's insincere and a moron. Well, what's worrying you? Well, I'm not so worried about being insincere, but as for being a moron... Oh, now, don't worry about that. You could act like a moron, couldn't you, dear? I could try. Oh, I'm going to dramatic school. Maybe they can teach me to be a moron. If you studied hard enough, yes. It'd take a lot of work. Look, Mrs. Reeves, I haven't even started my novel yet. And it doesn't look as if I'm going to if I'm continually interrupted. Well, we'll leave and let you work. Oh, Ronnie, I'm having a party for 50 guests tonight, and I'm expecting you to entertain for us at 9. Is it informal, or shall I bathe? If you don't care to entertain at my parties, pay your rent. <laughs> well, I'm off to the show. You haven't got a chance. <laughs> you know, ever since her husband died and left her seven buildings, she's been a peeping Tom. Now, come on, Steve, let's you and I prepare lunch. Look, I stayed only because I, I didn't want to cause a scene in front of your landlady, but I'm really leaving now. What an idea! What an idea! Take this down. Come on, take it down. Get the well, where's your pad? When you're gonna have a pad, you can't start a job like this without a pad. Wait, I've got to get it. 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 I've got to get
Wallace note on my new novel. That's all for now. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. He's incubating. He's incubating at last. Come along. He's always starting new novels. Yes, yes, always. I remember on last year's love, I was baking a cake. All of a sudden, he called me out, and I had to start taking dictation. And I couldn't go back until he was through dictating. At 3 o'clock in the morning, we sat down to chocolate-covered ashes. Oh. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll see you at 10 o'clock in the morning. Hello, Steve. I couldn't wait for you to call me, so I'm calling you. How was the job? Well, uh, I, I have to make an adjustment, you know. It's, it's such an unusual kind of a job. I can imagine. He, he, he started his novel today. Oh, interesting story? Well, he didn't get very far into it, but, but I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. He, he seemed so excited about it. Look, Steve. Let's have dinner one night this week. Well, I'll call you the first night I have free. how you'd look in mink? Oh, I see you've got your pad. Keep your pencil poised. The genius is still dressing. I'm making potato pancakes for lunch, and he's in a sour cream mood today. Uh, if you need anything ironed, I'll be in the kitchen ironing. Well, I, I... Good morning, Steve. Good morning, sir. Ah, right on time. Let's see. Uh, when did I leave off yesterday? Notes on my new novel. Yeah. Uh... New novel. Oh, yeah. Make that notes on my new novel by Owen Waterbury. That's good. Oh, that's real good. Don't you think that's good? Oh, I like that. Chapter one, general introduction of characters. Chapter two. Well, I'll do chapter two tomorrow. Chapter a day? That's swell. You sure you're not tired? Miss Gaylord, you stay here and answer the telephone. I, uh, I'm going to the beach for some salt air. Well, be sure you don't bring any home with you. Right, boy. Let's drive someplace nice, like Santa Barbara. Well, honey, anything you say. Don't pay any attention to him. He's just trying to make you jealous. Jealous? Well, what makes you think I'm, I'm even interested in him? You know, for a secretary who's just been given the day off, you're awfully annoyed. Annoyed? Of course I'm annoyed. I just don't want to sit here doing nothing. I came here to work. I came here to do nothing, and now I'm working. Look, if you get paid for idleness, grab it, you fool! There goes another one. I'd like to ask 
you a question. Yes? Does Mr. Waterbury intend to write a book? That's a very interesting question. Waterbury's a genius. What do you think he's doing right now? Incubating. Exactly. And whenever he goes through a mood like this, a great book comes out of him. I'll bet he does a lot of writing tonight. Why, honey, you're jealous. Look, I don't even know Mr. Waterbury. At this point, I'm not even sure I want to. Of course not, honey. Say, can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? Everything. Here, let me have it. How can you get so many wrinkles in it? Well, he's tried 16 laundries, but he still likes my work best. These are good shirts. We're good shirts. You know, I just thought of something. What? I must be going out of my mind. Why? Well, I went to night school for a whole year to learn to be a writer. And here I am doing a guy's laundry. Oh! It's not done yet. Hello? Miss Gaylord, this is Owen Waterbury. I want you to be here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I've finally gotten the idea. Thank you. You know, Owen, I like that idea. Yeah? I don't think there's a horse in there that can beat him. Never. Oh, leave your coat on. Need the taxi will be here in just a minute. Got a pair for her? Well, she can use mine. Where are we going? To the races. The races? Haven't you ever oh, been? I've never in my life. Swell. Always lucky the first time. Come on. But what about that idea you had last Oh, that can wait till after the third race. Look, I got a horse in here. Look, Mr. Waterbury, I don't think I ought to go along. Say, are you complaining about being paid to go to the races? Come on! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> This job has cost me $83. Now, don't worry. I'll see that you get that back. Why should you? I gambled and I lost. Well, losing's good for the soul. We have the three best souls in town. Leave your coat on, Steve. The plane leaves in 35 minutes. Plane? Where are you going? Las Vegas and get back the $83. Las Vegas? I can't go to Las Vegas with you. Well, are you objecting to being paid while working? Paid? I don't think I can afford to work for you much longer, Mr. Waterbury. Oh, Steve, it only takes an hour and a half to fly. You catch the evening plane back, you're home in time for dinner. Come with on. tons of money. No, I won't go. I just won't go. No, please. <laughs> No dollar bets here. When do you think you are, Los Angeles? Hit the road. Hit Come the road. On, baby, here we go. Come on. Oh, the easy way. Oh, what easy. is your point? Hard four. way. Four, the hard way. Hard way, four. Hard Come way, on, four. Baby, here it comes. Here she is. Four. And seven, you lose. Seven, you lose. Standing on my right again, huh? When are we leaving, Mr. Waterbury? Leaving? I'm stuck 3,000. But you said we'd catch the midnight plane. There'll be another plane at 2, darling. Next shooter, please. Grab the right shooter. Come on, let's go. Here, can I, can I, can I thought working for a writer was going to be so uplifting. Correct. See you, Lou. Correct. See what you did? But I, I didn't do anything. She didn't mean it. What are you grinning about? I'm betting on crap. Everything was going to be so intellectual. 
Correct again. Too bad. Are you doing that on purpose? What did I do? You're doing all right, honey. What's her point? Her point is crap. Can't you make crap. anything but craps? I was going to meet only literary people. Correct. Never saw that before. Don't make any more craps, understand? I'll tell him when he comes in. Keep your mind on the dice. Put this all on seven. She's all on make this five for one. You know, I'm writing a novel too, Mr. Waterbury. It'll be a honey. A two and a one. Correct. Four, oh, four, three. three. Get out of here. That's it, isn't it? What's wrong? Keep your mind on the dice when you roll them. How dare you speak to me like that? Just for that, you roll your own dice. Correct. Okay, Lord. Steve, where are you going? I'm going home, and I never want to see you again. You're a fraud, Mr. Waterbury, a cheap, egotistical fraud, and your whole existence is something I want no part of. I'm sorry I even met you, because you've spoiled something for me. You've spoiled my impression of Owen Waterbury, the writer. Steve, look, you, you can't go home alone. I'll take you home. Steve, please sit down, will you? I want to talk to you. Please. Steve, honestly, this gambling, it's an insidious thing. It changes a person. I, I'm really terribly sorry. Well, then why don't you put a stop to all of this and get down to work? I guess I'm afraid. Afraid of what? I'm afraid I'm not the great writer I started out to be. Instead, I'm just a commercial hack. Oh, no, you're not. Didn't you see how everyone at the university treated you with awe and respect? Why don't you write another love story? I see going backwards. Backwards? Stick to your last. You know the story of the clown who always wanted to play Hamlet? If you keep telling yourself you're a failure, you'll be one. If I try another love story, will you work for me? If you work, I'll work for you. Thank you. I'm poor again. I just switched to sevens. I'll tell you why. The taxi's gonna be here in just one minute. What? Oh, don't worry. We're gonna work, but let's do it at the beach house, huh? He's superstitious, honey. He starts all his novels at the beach house. <laughs> but why the beach house? Did you like last year's love? Very much. Well, most of last year's love was done down there. Well, uh, shall I take the typewriter? It'll be a nice idea. Ronnie, will you stop teasing the girl? I'll be dictating today. Come on, Steve. I'll dictate this in outline form, and then I'll polish it up later. Yes, Mr. Waterbury. This is the story of a successful novelist who began to die, morally and spiritually, until a girl came into his life. And then the whole world seemed changed. He'd seen her one night while delivering a lecture to a short story class. There were so many faces looming up in front of him, but he saw only one, hers. Wistful, delicate, exquisitely beautiful. Without her knowledge, he arranged to make her his secretary because in that fleeting moment, in that single instant, he knew he was desperately in love with her. One day, he asked her to go to his beach house and work there because he, he wanted very much to tell her the way he felt, but he lacked the courage. Mr. Waterbury, I... Miss Gaylord, when I'm working, I don't like to be disturbed. Sorry. Uh, where was I? He wanted very much to tell her how he felt, but he lacked the courage. Oh. Oh, yes. Now here she was, seated before him, tender and fragile as a poem. He had looked around a corner to corner, and there she was. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, I, I broke my pencil. Oh, here you are. Let's continue. He, uh... 
He was tempted to take her up in his arms and sweep her to the summit, but he didn't dare. He knew very little about her, yet there was nothing else he needed to know. As he strode up and down the room dictating, he, uh, he looked toward a polka dot necktie. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Oh. Uh, where was I? Polka dot necktie. Oh, polka dot necktie. Uh, he, uh, he was impressed by the loveliness of her hair, her soft blue eyes, her delicate mouth. A breathing, living thing that made him exalted and inspired. He wanted to take her in his arms and smother her with kisses and drown himself in the beauty of her soul, but he was a coward. How do you like it? It, it has possibilities. Suddenly, he threw caution to the wind. Leaned over and kissed her. She melted in his arms and offered no resistance. Wordlessly, they held one another in silent embrace. Whoa! You've got the wrong girl, Mr. Waterbury. I'm really leaving you this time. And don't you ever try and get in touch with me again. I don't even want my salary check. You can save it for the next victim. And if I ever see one of your books again, I'll burn it! Hello. Well, hello, son. I just thought I'd call you and let you know I made dinner for the three of us and ask Steve if she likes popovers. Steve's just quick. Yeah. I'm dictating a harmless little scene. Suddenly, she takes offense, slams me on the couch with a hammerlock, and walks out. Is she insane? Well, I'll call the agency and get them to send over another girl. I better get one who likes broiled chicken, because that's what we have for dinner. Don't call anybody. I'm not going to go to work for a long time. Come on, come on. Will you get out of here so I can wash these keys? I'm composing. Composing? I haven't heard a good song out of you yet. That's it. Give me that again. Thank you very much. What are you calling that thing? I got a cold in my nose. Come on, sing it. Oh, Mr. Ronnie, I... I... Oh, don't be silly. I just want to hear the quality. Snip, snip. Here's a handkerchief. Ka-choo, ka-choo. Don't hide to you. Let yourself go and blow. Oh, let yourself go and blow. Sad, ain't it? You won't get a piece of pie. What's in that garbage can? Pie? 30 misses out of 31 tries. <laughs> 31 misses. Well, at least the roast chicken's safe. <laughs> What's that? Roast chicken? How can you pour a roast chicken? Well, I had to roast it in the pressure cooker. It melted a little. Oh, he'll have his dinner out tonight. Well, so am I. You don't think I'm going to eat this horrible mess, do you? Hi, Owen. Hi. He has a nice roast chicken for you, Mr. Waterbury. Give him a glass for <laughs> Mr. Waterbury, I think it's my duty as your servant to tell you what just happened in the kitchen. Oh, now, Mary, why don't you go home? Mr. Ronnie set fire to the kitchen. I don't care if he sets fire to the whole apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you 
see Tattletail? A lot of good it did you. I'm gonna tell the landlady on you, and you too. Well, what happened down at the beach house? Will you stop asking me silly questions? I told you on the phone. She quit. That's all. Well, she had some nerve. Well, I don't need her. There's a lot of the secretaries. Well, of course there are. Just as capable, efficient, and just as cute. Sure. We never did find out how good she could type. Well, I'll call the agency and get another secretary. No. I got a better idea. What you gonna do? I'm gonna pass. Where are you going? To New York. Change of environment. I'll work better there. Gonna get rid of the apartment? Yep. Well, what's gonna happen to me? What should happen to you? That's a very unfair question. Boy, I'm not gonna let a little thing like a secretary throw me off balance. Never in a million years. I got a life to live, too. Wonderful, beautiful, exciting life. I got a book inside me, a great book, full of intensity and scope. Oh, you know something, Ronnie? I'm glad this happened. I'm down to earth now. What happened? Well, you can still use it. Elsie called. She's uh, sorry she quit in a huff, and she apologized for the cab driver. See? That's what Steve will be doing tomorrow. Calling and apologizing, but I won't be here. Say, what am I running away for anyway? I'm not afraid of her. That's what I like to hear. That's the real Owen Waterbury. Listen, call Elsie. We'll take her out to dinner. We'll take them all out to dinner, a different one each night. I'll go and change my apron and be right back. Brian, Detective Agency? Uh, this is Owen Waterbury. Yeah, look, I want you to shadow a girl for me. Stephanie Gaylord. Uh -oh. <laughs> now, let's all try to have a good time tonight, okay? I'm willing. Are you Ronnie? I'm willing. Good evening, Mr. Waterbury. Hello, Francois. Here, why here? I like it here. You've always hated the Ridgely Room. He's joking. I'm not joking. You've always hated it, hasn't he, Elsie? I thought so. I've always hated it. Mr. Waterbury, there's a gentleman here to see you. Gentleman? Oh, oh yes. Uh, Ronnie, will you take Elsie to a table, and I'll join you in just a minute, huh? All right, but don't leave us. Don't stick Elsie with the check again. Antonio, table three. Table three. Uh, where is he? Alcove two. Oh. Good evening. Is that the gentleman? Yes, sir. Hello. Did you send me that message? Yes. Brand Detective Agency. Oh. Devon is the name. Well, how'd you find it so fast? That's my job. There she is, right over there, with a man. Who's the man? I don't know. Do you want me to find out? Of course I do. All right, I'll stop chattering both him and her. I want you to find out everything you can about her. I think she's in love with him. She your wife? No, my secretary. I get you. Look, I want nobody to know about this. Don't worry. The way I operate, even you won't know about it. Can you check a pass for me? It'll be expensive. Well, why? The unknown quantity. We've just finished checking on a girl. It took us a year to get her pass caught up with her present. Do a good job. I will. Take care of my check. Yes? Yes, give me a pack, please. Don't talk to her. I'm mad at her. Oh, I forgot. Uh, good evening. Good evening. You know him? Uh-huh. He's my new boss. Your new boss? What's his name? Charles Harris, the bookseller. Uh, that's Steve's old boss. He's not so old. How dared you go work for him? Listen, Shakespeare, I'll work for whom I please. Oh, did you have to pick on her old boss? Did she pick on mine? 
When Mr. Harris called the employment agency, he asked for somebody with literary experience. How did you qualify? You used to work for Waterbury. Steve, with her principles, out with her ex boss What about Elsie? Who's she out with? We're talking about Steve and her principles. We find out of it. You know, I bet Harris hired you just to spy on me. Well, you're not very complimentary. I happen to be an excellent secretary. When did you learn to type, dear? Has he been questioning you about me? Only the normal questions about my experience. You didn't talk, did you? Ronnie, would you stop looking at everything as one big, long laugh? Well, I've got a laugh for you, lover boy. What? They're going to be married. They're what? They're going to be married. Where are you going? I'm going to talk to her. <laughs> Your order, please. A boiled chicken. You are? Well, I'll have a glass full, too. Hello. Good evening. Mr. Harris, Mr. Waterbury. Well, congratulations. I just heard the good news. What good news? How oh, about your marrying Stephanie? Uh, may I dance with the bride? That's entirely up to her, isn't it? May I? Thank you. Not at all. So she decided to get married to the wrong guy. Are we going to dance, or are you going to dictate a novel? Oh, now why should a nice, intelligent girl like you marry a man she doesn't even love? For your information, I'm not marrying anyone. Oh, well, now I respect you. You respect all girls who decide not to get married. <laughs> uh, going back to work for him? Is this a quiz, or are we going to dance? Well, it could be both. Say, how would you like your old job back? Better terms? Not interested. I'll throw in a bonus. Marriage. Mr. Waterbury, you talk about marriage as though it was something cheap and vulgar. Who else but Owen Waterbury would invite you out for the evening and dance with another girl? I would. Say, hey, why don't you pay him back and dance with Mr. Harris? I wouldn't think of dancing with my boss. This is me you're talking to, remember? Well, I mean, not till I'd worked for him for a few days. Well, that's a nice sentiment. Steve, you're in my arms at last. I'm holding you at last. We're dancing. You may be dancing, but I'm holding you. Oh, like the tide, you go out, but you also come in. Oh, and Waterbury, you're the most maddening man I've ever met. Listen to me, Steve, I love you. Everything I dictated at the beach house, I meant, but it was too much of a coward to say it out. I, I love you, Steve. Marry me. Take a chance. <laughs> this is me, the author with beautiful words, but I'm stuck. All I can say is, I love you. Marry me. Your chicken, madame. And your chicken in the glass, sir. down and have a glass of broiled chicken? Thank you, I think I will. <sighs> Ever hear the story of the unholy three? I think I'll be running along. Mr. Harris, would you mind taking me with you? Not at all. Well, who's going to take me? You watch the floor show. Want to dance? After tonight, I think I will be. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like 
life strange. When one gets up in the morning, one never knows what one will be doing in the evening, does one? <laughs> oh, dear. And in addition to the author supplies, please order one Remington electric typewriter for the outer office. Mr. Harris's office. Just a moment, please. Hello? Yes. What? When? Thank you. Goodbye. What's the matter? Is anything wrong? Owen Waterbury just married Steve. He didn't. Oh, yes, he did. I never thought she'd marry him. I never thought he'd get married. Well, here we are, honey. Welcome to Honeymoon Manor. Congratulations! Hi, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> May I be the first to kiss the bride? <laughs> Or am I the first? I'm not a very wide awake bride. Honey, let's get some sleep and then we'll go over to the beach house, huh? How long have you been driving? 24 hours. Las Vegas and back. Oh. Hey, whose bags are these? Oh, uh, those are Felicia's. As soon oh. as I told her the news, she decided to move out. It's a good idea. Darling, this is quite a threshold. Three stories up. Well, we can use the threshold upstairs. Oh, good idea. Hi, Felicia. Congratulations. You did very well. She certainly did. <laughs> I'll get you moved in as soon as I get her moved out. Okay. Down. Uh, why don't you try the building next door, dear? <laughs> Driver, old lady's home. <laughs> I made a wedding breakfast. Spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, look, Ronnie, I... Uh, well, I know you're trying to be helpful, but... Well, this is our honeymoon. And, well, we'd like to be alone. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. Say, Steve, be nice to him, will you? He's my only means of support. Are you glad you married me? Oh, what a question to ask me now. Well, it was on the spur of the moment, and, and you do change your mind, so... Darling, I'll never change my mind about you. You're the first nice thing in my life. Could you tell me where is apartment 3E? Who are you looking for? Isn't that the business of the people in apartment 3E? It's the next apartment down the hall, sir. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Yes, and what can I do for you? I have a message for Mr. Waterbury. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Waterbury can't be disturbed just now. He's, uh... He's a little busy. My name is Devaney. Will you tell him the woman he's interested in got married? Hey, Owen! You got a minute? Ronnie, what is it now? There's a fellow was outside, said his name was Devney. He had a message for you. I don't know any Devney. He said the party you were interested in got married. Well, congratulations. So did I. Darling, whom were you interested in who got married? There's only one married girl I'm interested in. Uh, you tell Mr. Waterbury I won't see him right away, and I mean immediately. Owen! Horrible Hannah's here. 
We call you that affectionately here. Mm -hmm. Now what is it? Oh, excuse me. I didn't know your uh, secretary was working late. They're married. Married? Well, as his wife, she might as well be in on this. Uh, just what can I do for you, Mrs. Reed? I've come for the rent. But I paid you the rent on the first, Mrs. Reed. I've had to make a new rule, Mr. Waterbury. I don't take bad checks. When did you make that rule? Since you moved in. Uh, darling, do you happen to have $485 in the bank? I think so. Well, uh, could you write me out a check till I get this thing straightened out? I can't understand how my account got so low. That 6000 for the crap game? Oh, yes. And the two bucks for the marriage license? <laughs> One has to live! <laughs> Thank you, dear. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Waterbury. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever call anybody Mrs. Waterbury. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll just walk you down the hall. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. Is this any good? She's loaded. <laughs> well, I suppose an explanation is in order. You don't owe me an explanation. Oh, but darling, I want to explain. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Owen. Oh, hello, Dick. Congratulations. We just heard. Well, thank you, Bertie. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Oh, darling! Uh, won't you come in and sit down? Oh, yes, thanks. thanks. Uh, oh, darling, I, I want you to meet Mr. Fulton, my publisher, and Bertie. This is my wife. How do you do? It's so nice knowing you. Oh, and you're not thinking of a prolonged honeymoon, are you? Oh, no, we're just going down to the beach house, and, well, I thought I'd dictate my honeymoon. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> you know, there's a deadline on that novel. It's got to be made. You know why. Well, I'll have it ready, Dick. Yeah, I'll count on it. <laughs> w would you like a drink? No, no, thanks. We're double parked downstairs. Come, dear. Uh, how's Ronnie? Oh, still eating. <laughs> Same old Ronnie. Yeah. As Bertie's told me about Ronnie. She says that when he dies, he'll ask the crematorium to baste him slowly on both sides. <laughs> you know Ronnie? Oh, of course. I was once Mr. Waterbury's secretary. Uh, well, thanks an awful lot for coming, Dick. Happy honeymoon. Thank you. Darling. Why did Mr. Fulton look at you so accusingly? Well, I owe him $20,000. I drew it as advance royalty against my next novel. And that mink coat Mrs. Fulton had on? Is that one you gave her? Oh, Bertie meant nothing to me. I'd written a bestseller and I was throwing money around like water. Well, you and... can always take it back and give it to Mr. Fulton as part payment. Oh, darling, I'll get you a hundred mink coats. <laughs> darling, I don't think I can afford a hundred mink coats. After all, paying your rent will keep me broke. Honey, did you marry me for my money? No, but I'm beginning to think you married me for mine. <laughs> Look, darling, let's get out of here. We're never going to be alone here. Honey, I know a perfect little mountain cabin away from publishers and landladies. And secretaries? Oh, well, except you. And I'm going to work. I promise you. I promise you. How long did you work on this book, Colin? Four months. I'm uh, rather proud of this one, Dick. Where's Mrs. Waterbury? Oh, Steve's down at the village getting groceries. She wants to prepare you one of her special dinners. Well, uh, I'm afraid I can't stay for dinner. I have to catch that next train back. Dick, let's drop the suspense. How'd you like the book? I'm going to let you have it right between the eyes, Ellen. You don't like it? I hate it. Just about the worst piece of drivel I ever read. If I were to publish this, Owen, it would ruin you. Fortunately, I found another book to use in its place. What's the matter with me, Dick? Am I through? Of course not. Every top flight novelist has a bad book in him. But how am I going to pay you back your money? Well, don't worry about that. I'm sorry, Owen. Darling, I got some of that wonderful venison. Why, well, hello, Mr. Fulton. It's so nice seeing you again. Miss Waterbury. Do you like venison? Well, I'm afraid I can't stay. Oh, why not? I've got some very important business in town. Well, 
I'm very sorry. I, I was going to fix you one of my special dishes. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, some other time. Goodbye, Mrs. Waterbury. Goodbye, Mr. Fulton. Goodbye, Owen. Goodbye, Dick. He doesn't like you. No. Do you think he's right? He's always been right. Until he married Bertie. Oh, what's that got to do with it? Well, maybe he's changed. Did you ever think of that? Maybe he sees you through different eyes. Oh, you talk like a fool. Oh, and let's face it. Your book is now being published by a man who sees his wife in your arms on every page. He thinks that girl in there is Bertie and you. You're a child. Bertie meant nothing to me. He doesn't realize that. And he's still a human being, even if he is a publisher. And he's a man. Let's get away from here tonight. Tonight? Oh, and you blame me, don't you? Oh, not really, Steve. It, it's just that it's so distracting to have a man's wife as his secretary, too. I've got to try another book fast, and... Well, I'm going to have to get myself another secretary. So I'm fired, is that it? Oh, Steve, it'll be better for both of us if I work by myself. It'll give you a chance to work on your own book. I'll make dinner. Owen, I finished my book. Oh, you did? Well, I'd like to read it. It's been on your dressing room table for two weeks. Oh, well, I'll, uh, uh, well, I'll read it on the train. Don't bother. Oh, you hurt. No, I'm not. You call and get tickets for the train and send Ronnie a wire to get you a new secretary. Tell me a phone from the station. Did you have a nice honeymoon? Very nice, thank you. It must be lovely up at the cabin this time of the year. Yes, it is. A Waterbury original? His last. Steve. Hello, Charles. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Oh, you're looking fine, fine. Well, four months of the outdoor life. None the worse for it. Charles, I want you to do me a favor. This is Owen's latest book. Fulton doesn't like it. I want you to read it and let me know what you think about it. I'll try to be as objective as possible. You will be, I know. And I have another manuscript for you. Mine. You finished it? Yes, it, it was a long uphill pull. Oh, I've changed the title so many times that I finally decided to call it Dawn Journey. What does Owen think of it? Owen hasn't read it yet. Oh? He hasn't had time. He, he's been busy writing. He couldn't concentrate on it. I'll be glad to read both of them. Thank you, Charles. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Charles. Third floor, but I can't find the Waterbury apartment. Well, here's Mrs. Waterbury. Well, how do you do? The employment service sent me over. What for? Oh, Mr. Waterbury wants a new secretary. Oh, is that so? Yes. <laughs> well, follow me. Oh, thank you. I, I know it's going to be so exciting working for Mr. Waterbury. Oh, yeah. Love it. I know I will. <laughs> you know, this is such a rush call. I hardly had time to drink. Oh, rest. Beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I made my own clothes. Oh, really? Yes. Come in. Come right in, Miss. Uh... What did you say your name was? Hilda Schneebacker. Miss Schneebacker. Owen, oh, darling, this is your new secretary. How do you do? Uh, this is my husband, Owen Waterbury, and this is Ronnie, our next door neighbor. How do you do? Uh, can I get you something to drink? Uh, have you any beer? Well, I should say we have. <laughs> 
And we have pretzels, too. <laughs> you know, I could just drink a barrel of beer. <laughs> what did you ask for on the phone? I thought they knew our account, dope. <laughs> oh, don't bother. Bring your beer over here where we can be more comfortable. <laughs> oh, uh, do you do laundry, Miss Schneebacher? Just shirts and socks. I don't like to do sheets. Oh, well, sit down, please. Uh, how are you on handicapping the horses, Miss Schneebacher? Oh, yesterday I picked two winners. Played them both right on the schnozola. Oh, and I think she's enchanting. Oh. Uh, what size coat do you wear? Do you have to wear a coat on the job? Oh, Mr. Waterbury likes to give all his employees mink coats for Christmas. Oh, I wish I'd known that. I could have saved the skunk flies. <laughs> I wonder who she means. I'm going to love this job. You're all so nuts. <laughs> uh, do you object working late hours, Miss Schneebacher? Not at all. A room with a girlfriend. I haven't seen her since New Year's. <laughs> Schneebacher, I'm afraid this job is going to be a little too much for you. But why are we Well, you see, just... several parts of my new novel are mostly in French, and well, I'm sure you don't speak French, do you, Miss Schneebacher? Studied it for six years. Once I had a French boyfriend, we had no trouble. <laughs> uh, yes, but how's your shorthand? Shorthand? I don't take shorthand. You don't take shorthand? Well, no. The agency said this was strictly a typing job. Oh. Oh, no. This is mostly a shorthand job. But I could learn it. No, no I I'm afraid not. Well, guess that lets me out. Uh, leave the glass, please. Oh. Thanks for the beer. Uh, that must be the next one. The next one? I told the agency to keep sending them until we said when. How do you do? Is this apartment 3E? Yes, it is. Does a Mr. Owen Waterbury live here? Yes, he does. <clears throat> uh, I'm Owen Waterbury. Oh, Mr. Waterbury, the agency sent me. Dawn O'Malley. That's right. Uh, won't you come in, Miss O'Malley? Thank you. Uh, won't you sit down, Miss O'Malley? Thank you. Oh, this is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, you take uh, shorthand, of course. Yes, 120 words a minute. Oh. Uh, do you speak French, Miss O'Malley? Mon mère, elle était française. Et mon père aussi. Vous avez raison, elle n'a pas peur pour le travail. Dites-moi, Mademoiselle O'Malley. Are you married by any chance? Yes, I am. But the divorce comes final next week. I see. When, uh, when would you like me to begin? You have begun. Oh, thank you. Uh, Steve, shall we prepare lunch and leave them alone? I think they'd like to get to work. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, did you ever work for a writer before? Yes, once about three years ago. But I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, well, why not? Well, he asked me to work late one evening and began getting a little fresh. So I called the police. All I want to do is work. I guess the publicity burned his career. But he deserved it. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. How about lunch, Miss O'Malley? Oh, I've already eaten, thank you. And you, darling? Uh, no, thanks. I'll skip lunch today. You would just love living in this building, Mr. Scott. And you would just love the Waterbury's. They're so bohemian. Crude. I'll go. Oh, hello. Hello, Mrs. Waterbury. I want you to meet your new neighbor, Sylvan Scott. He's moving under the bachelor part of the affairs that Felicia used to have. Yes, I know, Mr. Scott. Hello, oh, Stephanie. How nice. Come in, come now in. Now I want you to meet the important member of the family. This is the great Owen Waterbury. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Waterbury? And how do you do? This is the, the horrible Ronnie Hastings. Hello. New secretary. Yes. She was just hired, and I was just 
fired. Mr. Scott's a writer, too. My building will be just crawling with them. <laughs> yes, Mr. Scott and I went to night school together. We sat next to each other. Mr. Scott used to be a ball player. Just look at those shoulders. And they're not padded either. Well, what do you know? Silver writes that wonderful radio program called John's Mother's Lover. John's Mother's Sweetheart. Oh, yes. Tell me. Confidentially. Is John's mother going to marry her, sweetheart? No. John's father objects. John has no father. Oh, poor John. Sylvan, you'd better rush upstairs and start work on that radio program. You mustn't neglect John. Well, I'm in a little trouble. You see, my secretary just got married. Oh, what on earth are you going to do? I don't know. I could help you, Sylvan. You, Stephanie? Yes, you see, I was Mr. Waterbury's secretary before he married me. That's right, you were. The marriage was a bonus. Mm -hmm. oh, when could we begin? Why don't you just say, I've begun. Oh. Ronnie, dear, would you get me some shorthand books and some pencils? Uh, how much do you think you'll be giving me tonight? Well, we may be working most of the night. Well, that's just ducky. I'm used to working at night. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> Don't work too hard. I won't. Come on. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, I seem to have fixed everything up. You certainly have. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I'll run along. Uh, must you go? I was just poisoning the tea. Oh, Ronnie, you're such a... <laughs> you know, uh, you're going to really like it here, honey child. Watch your hands. I don't tolerate familiarity from anybody, and I mean anybody. I once ruined a man's career, and don't you forget it. Uh, Miss O'Malley, you may have the day off. Why don't you make it a year? But I haven't even begun yet. Oh, that's all right. You get paid just the same. Oh, well, all right. Uh, what time tomorrow? Oh, any old time. Suit yourself. But, but I don't understand. Well, how about noon? All right. Thank you. Well, you were saying something about poison tea? I mixed it. I get firsties. Now, where was I? Sound of footsteps. Three people. Thank you. Sound of footsteps. Three people. Door bang. Door crash. Door slam. Two shots. Three screams. Siren. How does that sound? <laughs> well. It's bedlam. John, I'm in love with your mother. And tomorrow, I expect to be your father. John's going to be a father, and I'm the first to know. Now I don't have to listen tomorrow. But, Father, I'm older than you are. John's older than his father? What happened? That's what I'd like to know. I don't know. But don't you worry, Miss Waterbury. I'm not going to do anything. Hello. Hey, they just turned out the lights. Who's calling? This is Charles Harris speaking. I'm sorry to be calling at such a late hour, but I must talk to her. They just turned out the lights. Will you keep quiet? This is her husband. No, she's out for the evening. She's right upstairs. And I don't know when she'll be back. Didn't you hear me? I said they just turned out the lights. Darling, may I borrow a light bulb? I don't care what you do. What's the matter? I'm going to a hotel in case you're interested. I'll go to a hotel. After all, this is your apartment. No, it isn't. You pay the rent. Ronnie, will you take this up to Mr. Scott, please? Oh, and you can't possibly be jealous of that man upstairs. Why, he's utterly harmless. Boy, you really had me fooled. Why do you say that? Charles Harris just called. Have you seen him, Steve, since we came back? Oh, and it, it's terribly late, and, and I don't like cross-examinations. After all, we're two adult human beings, and, and we should be able to trust one another. Don't smile at the way with pretty words, Steve. Have you been seeing him? Yes. All right, then this is it. But I only saw Charles Harris for one reason. 
I took him your manuscript. He knows a great many publishers. Please don't. It's too late for that. I felt at the nightclub you were in love with Harris, and I knew he was in love with you. After all, five years is a long time, and I was a fool to think I could break it down. I never loved Charles Harris. Well, you never loved me. You were in love with a schoolgirl notion of a popular novel. I really try to play this straight with you, Steve, but I guess I made a beautiful mistake. Owen, I was in love with you before I met you. Something in your writing, the, the tone, the feeling, the, the quality appealed to me so much that I used to imagine you books were written just for me. It's true, I, I built it up in a schoolgirl way, and, and I was so caught up in it, I, I guess I would have married you the night you lectured in class. If you'd stepped off that platform and, and asked me, I, I would have married you. Just like that. How can you talk to me like that? I put you way up there too, Steve. But you tore it down in the cruelest way any woman could. You once called me an egotistical fraud. But what about you, Stephanie Gaylord? What have you been? Go ahead, phone him. He's waiting for you. Oh, I... head of the publishing house in New York. He flew down this morning. That's why I called you so late last night. We've read your book, Miss Gaylord. How long have you worked on it? Oh, about five years. I'm recommending it for the McNally Winslow Award for first novel by an unknown. I didn't know you were going to show my manuscript to anyone. I couldn't do anything else after reading it. But don't you see what this will do to Owen? What has Owen got to do with it? Well, Owen's the big guy in my family, and his novel's just been turned down. And if this happens on top of that, it, it would just about destroy him. He has to have a sense of importance. He, he's lost all faith in himself. You mean your husband would feel a sense of competition with you? You don't understand, Mr. McNally. Owen's in trouble. And as his wife, I, I have to help him climb out of it. Steve, I thought you wanted to write more than anything else in the world. I thought so, too, before I married Owen. What about Owen's manuscript? Did you read it? Yes. It, it isn't bad. It's good. But it doesn't have what this has. This has greatness. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Steve, please sit down. I want to talk. I'm giving your popovers another try. Well, give me time to call the fire department. <laughs> no, 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 Miss O'Malley. That's not the line I gave you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Sharp. All right. Let's try it again. Yes, sir. John. Mother, I've changed my mind. I don't like your sweetheart. 
mother. Well, I like him. That's all that matters. John, as your son, I refuse to approve the marriage. Mother, you're not marrying him. I am. How does that sound? Stinks. Amen. Mr. Hastings, I must say you're distracting. You know, you shouldn't be using Mr. Waterbury's apartment or Mr. Waterbury's secretary. Well, Mrs. Waterbury isn't here, and I've got to get the program out. Well, why don't you work in your apartment? She won't work upstairs. Well, then why don't you work without her? I can't. I'm a dictator. Dear, why won't you work upstairs? I don't work in men's bedrooms. It's not a bedroom. It's a bachelor apartment. My husband was a hotel manager. One room is a bedroom. Two or more is an apartment. Sylvan, she's got you there. Oh, come on, let's work. Hello, Mr. Waterbury. Yes, what can I do for you? Remember me? I'm Devaney of the Brand Detective Agency. Oh, oh. What's this? A bill for $845.62. For well, what? For shadowing and delving into the past of one Stephanie Gaylord. But I married her. Uh, we've shadowed married women before. Hi, Owen. Get rid of this guy. You want me to call the police? I am the police. What's this doing here? That's my laundry. Do you expect my wife to do your laundry? Hey, that's a little large for you, isn't it? That's Mrs. Waterbury's laundry. That's mine. Well, take it and get out of here. And as for you, Mademoiselle O'Malley, you're fired for taking dictation from somebody else. Well, that suits me just fine. I wouldn't work for you even if I did like your horrible writing. Where's Stephanie? I don't know where she is. I know where she is. Where? You pay this bill and I'll let you know. Oh, Ronnie, do you happen to have $845.62? And Why don't you write him a check? Oh, yes. Call that number right away. Here is the detailed report. It's very amusing. You see, I had to shadow you at the same time that I shadowed her. Here's Stephanie. Oh. Yes. Stephanie, where are you? What? What are you doing there? Stephanie, if there ever any chance of our getting together, this kills it now. Finally and for all time, we're through. Charles Harris's apartment. Just like that, no sense of shame. Well, maybe she got her old job back and was working for him. At his home? What decent, self-respecting girl works for a man at his home? Maybe she's his secretary. Please, don't tell me about secretaries. He could tell you. Here's the report. Page three is wonderful. Thanks. Right. Call the employment agency. I'm going to show her. Look, I want a girl this time who's capable and efficient. I'm calling for Mr. Owen Waterbury. A fast typist. I don't care what she looks like. We don't care what she looks like, as long as she's attractive. Do you take shorthand? Oh, but of course. A hundred twenty words a minute. Uh -huh. And, uh, what did you say your name was? Miss Pigeon. <laughs> Uh, her name is Miss Pigeon. Everybody says I'm flighty. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you work before? I'm just out of secretarial school. I think it would be wonderful working for you, Mr. Waterbury. You see, I hope to be a writer myself someday. Oh. Uh, have you ever been married? Oh, no. Never. And uh, you have no objections to working on weekends? Oh, not at all. My time's completely my own. And you think Mr. Waterbury's just wonderful? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a clay pigeon. <laughs> I've come for my things. Follow me, Bill. I know just where to go. I want you to take everything out of that drawer and put it in that bag. Right. Mm -hmm. I knew you'd come back. But it's only for a moment. Uh, where's the mink coat? I didn't get a mink coat. Come into the bedroom, Bill. What's the matter? Short of mink? Say, haven't you been here before? Sure, I came with the other one. I got a cab stand downstairs now. If you need a cab, just open the window and holler. Well, I'm going to do a lot of hollering now. Uh, that's his former secretary. Get my bag and things out of the closet. Oh, so you're not in love with Harris, but you go to his apartment. You wouldn't let me explain, and now I'm not going explain. to. Explain? What kind of an explanation could you make anyway? It doesn't matter anymore. You're right, it doesn't matter anymore. Isn't she getting awfully personal? What a wonderful typist. Charles Harris is a partner. Just like that. Just like that. Anything else, miss? Yes, my picture. If I were a man, I... If you were a man, I'd ask you to step outside. Go ahead. Hit me. Nah. I dare you. Did he slap her? I should say not. She slapped him. I've known all along why you've resented me. It was because I liked your novel and I told you so. You think you've wasted your time. That's your tragedy. My only tragedy is you. 
I'm going far, far away from here, and I'm going to write a book about you. I'm going to call it The Heel and His Victim. That's a very horrible title. It'll do. Goodbye, Owen Waterbury. And don't you ever try and get in touch with me, because I want no more of you. And that goes for me, too. Where's Miss Pigeon? She, uh, flew the coop. Where do you think Steve's going? I think she's gonna marry Harris. Harris, I'd like to see that little worm. I'm going, too. Now, where are you going? I'm so mad I could get married. You know, I think I'll have to. Well, whom are you gonna marry? It'll be a female, that's about all I can say. Mr. Harris. Your name? Owen Waterbury. <coughs> excuse me, sir. And excuse me. I didn't mean to disturb you and my secretary. Your former secretary. Oh, I didn't know you were in the middle of dictation. Your sarcasm is quite uncalled for. Of course, I don't have to tell you what I think of a man who behaves this way with a secretary. <laughs> you keep out of this, Elsie. Look, Charles and I are going to be married. Congratulations. What? Just where does that leave my wife? How do you suppose she's going to feel about this? She's in love with you, you know. You never deserve to find a girl with Stephanie anyway. You know, Harris, I've always wanted to tell you that I really think you're a crude person. Your motives are very obvious. You've given me a lot of grief ever since I married Stephanie, and I came up here to tan your hide. So put up your hands and defend yourself like a man. Oh, you tan somebody's hide. Oh, listen to me, you fool. Why do you think Stephanie came up here in the first place? Because she wrote a novel, and Harris wanted to have it published. She didn't want that. She was afraid it would hurt your vanity and wreck your marriage. She wanted him to help you instead. Oh, look, I've read your last book, the one Fulton turned down. It's grand, it's exciting, it's wonderful. Fulton's wrong, he's just jealous because of Bertie, and it's all your own fault, Mr. Great Guy. You know, someday Stephanie's going to be a better writer than you are. That's my opinion, and you've always valued it. Here, Stephanie's novel. Read that and really get jealous. You know, you're not going to get her back. She's gone away, and it serves you right. I hope I kicked a little sense into you, but I doubt it. Goodbye, Mr. Waterbury. you with these papers. What for? Suit for divorce from Mrs. Waterbury. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, mine's three. What's yours, please? Four seats. Sylvan Scott's apartment? Oh, I did? I didn't know who lived there, but uh, I'm his new secretary. I see. Good luck. Hello, Mr. Waterbury. Hello, Mary. Well, I guess so. Mary, did you see Ronnie around? Well, I haven't seen Mr. Ronnie in about three days. But I heard Kelly got married. Married? Is 
That's funny. He didn't even invite me to the wedding ceremony. Me neither. Ronnie gets married. I'm getting a divorce. Did you know that, Mary? Mrs. Waterbury's divorced me. I sure was sorry to hear that, Mr. Waterbury. She was an awful nice person. So was you. At times. Thank you, Mary. Well, I see Scott hiring a new male secretary. Well, Mr. Scott doesn't live in this building anymore. He moved out yesterday. Oh. Well, who moved in up there? Mrs. Waterbury. Yes. She's a big writer now. Well, of all the nerve, I'll fix her. She can't do this to me. <laughs> until the final decree, and that takes a whole year. Are you still here? I said but get out. Mr. Simpson, you come back here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. You'll come yes, back sir. here never. If I find you here again, I'll throw you out on your ear. Yes, sir. Hiring male secretaries right under my nose. Right over your nose, dear. And don't be cute at a time like this. Why'd you take this apartment anyway? Because it was the only one I could find, and Mrs. Reese was kind enough to let me have it. Oh, sure, sure. I thought you'd think I was chasing you, Owen Waterbury. But my living here need cause us no embarrassment. We can be friends, meet in the hallway, and exchange polite little hellos. I exchanged polite little hellos with your friend Harris recently. Elsie was there. She told me all about your book. Well, you didn't want to have it published because of what it might do to me. <laughs> That's silly. I mean, do you think I look upon you as a competitor? Don't you think I can compete with you, Mr. Waterbury? I read your book last night. Kept me up most of the night. You want to know something? Yes. You're better than I am. But don't tell anybody because I'll deny it. Now you listen to me, Mr. Owen Waterbury. I'm a human being too, and, and I have certain rights and privileges. I had an idea for a book, and, and you made me lose a very good secretary. Well, look, why don't you dictate it to me? You? Sure, I can take shorthand. Oh, and Waterbury. Look, you want to know a secret? What? I'm a better secretary than you are. Oh. All right, prove it. Get the shorthand book and pencil. Okay. And I don't want to hear another word about our personal problems until I get this down. Let's call this Notes on my new novel by Stephanie Gale. This will be the story of a girl who became secretary to a, a very egotistical man who thought he knew everything there was to know about writing. Oh, now, wait a minute, please. Please, you... please, you're interrupting my train of thought. He was attractive in an ugly sort of way. Thanks a million. Will you please stop interrupting me? But, but he, was, he was filled with, with childish frustrations and, and complexes which... She, in her silly way, tried to cure. Now, wait a minute, Steve. I'm not going to sit here and take down this... Listen, this is my new book. Until... Until she suddenly discovered... He didn't need a wife. He needed a... A psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? That does it. Now I'm insane, am I? Okay. But if you publish that book, I'll sue you. You just go ahead and sue me. If you think I'm afraid... Hello. You know, this book sounds very interesting, but there's one thing I've got to know. Did she love him? Well, of course she loved him. She loved him deeply, devotedly, desperately. Then why didn't you say so? I've, uh, I've come for the rent. Ronnie is your, uh, new landlord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that vase belongs up there. And this belongs here. And this belongs here. Oh, Ronnie. <laughs> Mr. 
Did you recognize Irene Ryan as Mary? You probably know her as Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies. Before she played the feisty matriarch of the Clampett family, Irene Ryan worked for many years in movies, the stage, and radio. It was none other than Bob Hope who kept Ryan working, in fact. He often invited her to appear in his radio show and on his military tours. This is the film Detective. We have lots more to come, so please stay with us.